What's up? Welcome back to RPM Automoto. I know I've been absent on this channel for a while, but I've been looking for stuff like this to buy on Facebook Marketplace. And that stuff is hard to find, expensive. So, been looking for a while, finally found something to put on the channel. Uh, hope you guys are still hanging out with the channel. And you can check out the first channel, RPM Auto. Been doing a lot of stuff on there because I've been trying to find something for the second channel. But anyway, this is a 98 Yamaha YZ250. I uh, picked this thing up off a of marketplace for uh, 580 bucks from a guy. He said he traded a 4.3 Chevrolet motor for it and he claims he's never started it it does have an issue with the uh, chain it's like the chain had came off and smacked the case over here and somebody grabbed some blue silicone on there a lot of it and that's pretty much what kills these bikes because nobody adjusts the chain and it gets sloppy loose pops off takes out the case saver and the case but he said he never started it it smells like it's got some bad gas in the tank like it's been sitting someone has put a new clutch cable on it and they got it routed wrong should be routed, routed up through the triple trees and then to the handle. I uh, don't have a lick of brakes on it. It's got some good tires on it. All the plastics. That I think the seat's been redone. But seat's in good shape. But it's a 98 model. Uh, Yamaha 250. Got the pro circuit pipe. Uh, got the sticker kit on there. Rockstar energy drink. You know, the typical stuff they put on these bikes. FMF, which you don't even have an FMF. It's got a pro circuit silencer and head pipe. So, my plan is to drain the tank, put some fresh gas in this thing, and, uh, see what fire up and we possibly can ride it, it don't have any brakes I might can just bleed out the back brakes it's got a little bit left of brake pads and uh, possibly take it for a ride and see how bad the oil pours out right here now it's pulling the clutch in so that still works I've looked up some cases on eBay and found a couple around the $150, $200 range just for this one side. But to replace that side, you got to break down the whole engine. So that means the top end's got to come off. Uh, you got to split the cases to replace that one half. Um, but we might be able to. Uh, might just be able to just JB weld it. If it's going to be pouring oil out of it when we fire it up, maybe we can just throw some JB weld on it for now. And if I find a case half, because a lot of them on there are already damaged. I don't know why people would put damaged ones on there, but we might be able to JB weld it up just to ride it. Maybe get a case cover for it, or maybe pull the engine out of it and send it over to get that repaired but then you won't have the mounting for the case saver there's like a guard that goes over the front sprocket and there's like some of them got like a, a metal flat piece of metal that goes in front of the sprocket so if the chain pops off it hits that metal instead of hitting uh, the case but my main concern is hearing it run now it's got good compression that was the first thing I did was kicked it over. Hope I don't kick it off of this. Okay. 
it's got good compression for 250 so I believe it'll run he said the guy he got it from said it'll run but it was a problem with the case over there I don't know uh, I did check the antifreeze it's full the radiators look good I don't know if those are aftermarket radiators or what but they look real good it's got all the uh, kill button these grips are slid way back it's got the kill button regular bars on those are probably factory bars that's kind of stiff it needs to be greased up I say the front mass cylinder is empty but I don't know it's just an old dirt bike I mean these bikes are still popular I mean a lot of a lot of guys get them just to do you know the crazy willingness on the street just wheeling them all over town and a lot of guys are still buying these to ride in the woods and out in the desert do stunts and stuff on I'm kind of believing I don't know if this is aftermarket I mean that number plate looks pretty good they put that rockstar stuff on it but I mean it might just be all original plastics so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pull the spark plug we'll check it for fire make sure it's firing and uh, I'll do that after I pull the gas tank off and dump it out because it smells like it's got a little bad gas in it and then we'll put some fresh two cycle mixed gas in there if it's got spark we'll see what it crank up and we need to check the oil too that's first I don't know what's all this on this case right here looks like oil might have been coming from the pipe because the seal that goes around where the silencer goes into the pipe is gone and they got some kind of orange silicone on there so might have been running a little rich like they mixed too much two cycle oil and it's blowing everywhere I did notice that uh, this uh, mount right here is busted off of the pipe but it's still got a mount there and it's got the springs at the front so anyway like I said I'm going to pull the gas tank off and I'm going to uh, drain that, check it for spark and we'll go from there with it alright so let's start out checking the oil on this thing I believe it's this 8 millimeter right here behind the brake pedal I don't know why they would put it there because you would have to uh, get in there with a wrench or something or a swivel and if you pull that screw out uh, that should tell you how much oil is in it these things don't have dipsticks so let me get a small ratchet We can sneak up. Ah. Why would Yamaha? Why would they put the oil check screw in a spot like that? Look like to me they would have put it up front. Cause it's almost like you gotta take the brake pedal off just to uh, cause you can't go that way. Talking about stripping a bolt. Uh, let me 
can't get a swivel, I guess. I don't understand that. Makes no sense. To have can't even get in there with a swivel. I mean, if you're out riding on the track or in the woods and you want to check the oil, so I guess I'm going to have to take this brake lever off. I don't know if I can get in there with a wrench. Not unless you got a crow's foot. I had to go up from the bottom of the bike with a ratchet wrench but I got it on the stand so that means I gotta move it back I guess you're supposed to do it on the ground huh this is ridiculous I think I'm going to have to put it on the ground. The stand's hitting. So, let me uh, get it off of the stand. I don't know why Yamaha would do some mess like that. Bear with me, I got a new tripod. <laughs> dipstick if I let this go oil is going to come out everywhere I 
Why is it not starting? It's making no sense. I, I know you guys can't see it, but went no other way. But you take that screw loose, if oil comes out, you got oil. It looks like the oil pretty clean, so I suspect they've probably been adding oil to it with that case. Is that case is cracked. Now whether it's got too much oil in it, that's a different story. Smells like gear oil, but I don't think it is. I'm gonna get it back on the pan. We'll change the oil in it anyway. Alright, so it's back on the stand. So now what we're gonna do is check the air box, pull the seat off. And uh, make sure that there's no rodent's nest in there. Make sure it's got an air filter in there. Because I know how rodents like to live in air boxes. And they will chew up the air filter. Stuff like that. So let me get a tin. It's only one. Ten millimeter. Bolt. I gotta take the gas tank off anyway. Oh, it's like a good filter in there. Pretty clean in there. It's got a, looks like maybe a uni filter. It's not dry rotted. So that's good. Gas tank. It should have some bolts up front. Up front somewhere. I think it goes up under the radiator shroud. Y'all bear with me. I got a new tripod. And it's kind of funny to work with. Why don't we take the tank off? Oh, it's a 10 millimeter. 10 mil. Yamaha to put the radiator hose. Well, it's 
just got two separate bolts. I hope they didn't. Spike's been sitting for a while. It's got gas in it. I don't like the way it smells though. It didn't. It didn't smell too hot. So I guess while we got the tank off, uh, we'll check it for a uh, spark. See if it's sparking, take the plug out. And uh, hopefully it's got spark. He was told that it ran, but I don't know if he tried to crank it. Especially two stroke. Unless you heard it run and you trust the person had 
pre-mix the oil right. I will run the two cycle oil. If not, dump it out and mix your own two cycle because you don't know if they might not have enough two cycle oil or too much. So plugs kind of brownish looking. It's kind of fouled a little bit. It smells like bad gas. I bet you they want to run the right amount or too much two cycle oil. I'm turning the lights out. Kick it over. See if we got some uh, sparky orchids. Yep. I can smell the bad gas. You got good blue spark. I'm gonna find a new plug to put in it. Cause that one's kind of toasty. Uh, I checked the coolant, it's full. I'm gonna dump the gas tank out. I'm gonna drain the carburetor bowl. And uh, we should be ready to crank it up. So let me find a new plug, dump the tank, and drain the bowl, and get everything set up, and uh, we'll see what this thing crank. So the guy wasn't lying about him not trying to crank it because I just pulled the drain bowl screw, and look what came out. Water and bad gas and look at the drain screw packed with mud so I don't know if somebody was filling it up with mud <laughs> so I'm gonna to have to pull the carburetor and it stinks I mean when I pulled the gas poured the gas tank out it was the same color like brownish looking so it's been sitting for a while so that's kinda of scary either it's pouring oil out of that crack or something else is wrong with it like the clutch it goes in gear so i don't think it'll be gearbox but i'm gonna go ahead and pull that carburetor off and break it down and clean it out and then uh then we'll crank it up like i said i got fresh gas got a new plug so the fuel ends next so i got the carburetor off found out some sort of bad news one of the overflow tubes is broken off well it was, it was kinda hanging on to the carb and it's wrapped up inside behind the counter shaft sprocket and uh, I tried to pull it out it won't come out so I'm gonna have to pull the counter shaft sprocket off and get that piece of plastic tubing out of there it's probably didn't ate up the counter shaft seal it's a lot of oil down there so that's probably where the oil was leaking from uh, also that seal is all messed up from that tubing getting caught up behind it so the nuts basically almost loose so I'll take that off and get that out check the uh, counter shaft sprocket seal and this carburetor looks like it was at the bottom of the Titanic so I get it all cleaned up and then I'm gonna take the bike outside tonight spray it down with some purple power and uh, it's got tree sap and dirt I'm gonna clean all that off before I put the carburetor back in so I'm gonna get started on that and hopefully the carburetor I can just kind of clean it out just good enough to uh, get it to fire up. If not, I might have to stick it in the ultrasonic cleaner. So here's the carburetor. I kind of cleaned it off a little bit. It looked like the engine just completely covered in mud. So it's got all these overflow tubes on it. I guess we'll pull these off 
so we can actually get in the bottom of this thing. I guess I could leave it on this screw. Hopefully, the screws ain't all stripped out. Looks like somebody's been tapping on it. It's got some marks on the uh, bowl. That's the inlet fuel hose there. By looking at the drain screw, it is full of uh, trash. I don't know if I showed y'all that or not, but look at that. I mean, it's ridiculousness. So let's see what we got. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. That definitely needs to be cleaned. That's just water from when I cleaned it off with some uh, purple power. So I'm gonna strip it down. I'm gonna throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, that way to be be nice and clean. Rather than just spraying it out and uh, throwing it back on there, I had to take it back off again. Hose does not want to come off of there. Mm. Man, that freaking hose is stuck on there. It won't come off. Might have to leave it on there. I might cut it off there. Hose is off. Get something to uh, get that off of there. Float set up here. Needle and float. Yeah, this bike's been sitting for a while. Get the center jet out of there. Your main jet.
Oh. It's too big. Must be. Is that a quarter? Oh. It's going to be a crescent wrench. This carburetor even has a removable center section. You can take these security screws out of here and the whole center of the carburetor will come out. for better cleaning. There's a jet way down in there. Every carburetor is different. Some of them. Mm. That's tight. Make sure when you messing with these jets, use a good screwdriver because they're way down inside of the carburetor. You can easily strip them. So get you a good small flathead screwdriver. Jet right there. Stopped up. I don't know if we should remove this center section or not. It's actually just a man. That whole if you, I don't know if you can see, but inside where the needle goes, it is completely gummed up. It ain't no way this bike would have ran. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of hard to focus. It's completely gummed up. So luckily, we did take that hose off. I'm going to take the choke off. Take it off of there. It's got goo on it too. Uh, we got the air screw. We might as well go ahead and pull it out. Got to be careful behind the air screws because they have springs and washers and seals with this one it's, everything's gummed up in this carburetor this one's got the spring and seal made on it but it will come off so removing this part here with the security secu security screws let me see if I got I should have a tool to get that out be better if we could remove it so we can clean it got this little Yep, well no, that's two. Got another set. I don't know if this one's got any. Got a set outside though, the truck. I tell you what, we're just gonna leave that. Leave that in there and we'll just 
put the whole carburetor in there and I'll find some I got some uh, they're actually just what your uh, star bit I like this it's a star bit but it's got the circle in the middle they're security screws I don't know why they put it in there anyway I mean what somebody gonna steal the center of the carburetor they don't want you to take the carburetor apart so we'll leave that in there and we'll toss this off in the in the ultrasonic cleaner let it sit and uh, put it back together and hopefully it runs this bowl they got silicone on it from I don't know if they were silicone in the carburetor or silicone from that side cover being cracked. We'll toss this off in there. So anyway, we'll get it clean, put it in the bike, see how she runs. So we are back with the Yamaha YZ carburetor. So in the last uh, portion of this video, I had tore this thing down, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and uh, let it soak. And I did get the center section out of the carburetor. I had to get those security screws out. So it goes in there. That's where your main jet is. So I let this thing soak. I also picked up a carburetor kit. It's um, from All Balls Racing carburetor kit 1782 well on there it says 751874 all balls racing there's a part number so this got the needle uh, it's got your jetting your main jet your idle jet air screw new bowl screws New bowl gasket, new drain screw, O-ring, and new center section uh, gasket. This is the old one here. These gaskets, when they get old, they smush and they get real flat and they won't seal. Well, that's the old bowl gasket there. So, everything's been cleaned. Now, you have to be careful because on some of these jets, they send with these carburetor kits. They might be a different size jet. So, if you can read the number on your uh, old jets, you want to make sure you go back with the right jets. It even comes with a new uh, needle for your throttle slider and same thing you have to make sure everything matches uh, like here is the main jet there let's see if we can see a number on there that says 45 this one says 48 it's a lot When I know it says 45. Let me get a light. Don't have my glasses. Yeah, that says 45. And the new one says. Forty-eight. So you can use these jets, but you have to use both of them. Like this one says 172. And this one here says. One sixty. This light is about dead. That one says 165. So it's to your preference. Whichever one you want to use. I think I'm just going to go back with the jets that were 
in this carburetor because somebody put a pro circuit pipe on it and they might have jetted it for the pipe sometimes you have to jet them for aftermarket uh, exhaust so we're gonna go back with what came out that way it all worked the same so what I need to do now is put uh, this center section back together it has this little gasket here but for some reason it don't have the other little gasket that goes around the little jetted area this one's got two extra little o-rings on, made on it I don't know if it needed or not. Didn't come in the kit, but we'll tear it off of there. And uh, as you see, it's got those two little holes, but the new kit didn't come with a gasket for it. Oh. It just came with the with the half circle. Uh, That's going to be hard to put back in there. This aftermarket stuff be some somewhat bright. But somehow this gas has got a form. Hmm. That's going to be hard to get that gasket to stay like that. I mean, uh, it's not, it's not shaped like, see how this one's shaped? It's got the little square part. And look at the new one. It don't even have that part on it. So you might have to go back with the old one. It's kind of flat though. Cause there ain't no way I can get that shape like that. We'll just, we'll just put it back together like it was, I guess. Sucky part is getting it all to stay together. I really didn't want to take this off, but uh, I want to make sure that uh, this carburetor is super clean. So I guess what I can do. Stick it together like that. Cause I don't know how you would get this little thing to preform itself. We could have put like some little silicone or something on it, but we'll give it a shot. So these are the little security screws. It's a star bit. And you got, ooh, it's got dirt all on it. This is a T20 star bit screw, uh, star bit for the security screw. I had to find my little uh, screwdriver set that had the little security screws in it so we're just gonna put it back together then because like I said I can't get that gasket like that we'll tighten it down torque it on down there where 
hopefully it won't leak so then this goes here like I said I'm gonna go back with the jets that was in the carburetor already because I don't know how they had it jetted those might be stock jets and I don't want to fool with having to take it back down to rejet it. And then this one goes in there. Again, make sure you're using the right flathead screwdriver for these jets because they will strip and you'll never get them out of there. So then we got the air screw, which it came with a new air screw, and it came with a new O-ring and a snap ring. I'm just going to put the original air screw with the new little o-ring and the little washers I don't know what that little snap ring goes to and always have your good clean workspace because these parts are so little you can you can easily lose them I've dropped check balls before little small check balls little small o-rings and stuff on the floor and take hours to find it so we'll put the air screw back in it goes to the side of the carburetor there I didn't count how many turns it was I forgot to I think it's what three turns out I'm gonna go three and a half all right so now we got the choke make sure that works good Back in it. I've built a lot of carburetors over the years and some of them are different and some of them the same once you do so many of them uh, they're pretty much easy four carburetors two carburetors together so choke is in All right, so we got a new, we got a new needle, and this one has the seat that's pressed into the, it's pressed into the carburetor. Some of them have removable seats for the needle that you can get out. Some of them have some with screens down in there to keep the trash from getting in the carburetor. There's our float and you want to make sure your so that's going up and down. The needle's moving like it's supposed to. Got a new bowl gasket.
new bow gasket and we got a new o-ring for the drain screw The only thing I got to do now is just put the four new screws that came with the carburetor in the bowl. You want to make sure you hear your floats and uh, get the carburetor on the bike and uh, we'll be ready to fire this dude up. I'm not going to change the slider on the for the, the needle slider. I'm not going to change it. Like I said, that could have been changed. I gotta put the hoses on it too. Just wanted to show y'all it together. Plus my camera battery's dying. It's been counting down for a while. So the only thing I gotta do now is just put these these little drain tubes back on the bowl. But that's basically it right there. Uh carburetors all back together so I'll get it the drain screws on it and uh, we'll get it on the bike fire it up and uh, hopefully this thing uh, runs real good now the carburetor has been cleaned and rebuilt alright folks it's the moment we all been waiting on so I got the carburetor back on we got the cables rerouted gas tank back on uh like I said it already had oil in it um so we're just gonna put some gas in it and hopefully it fires up and run like it's supposed to we know it's got uh fire going to the plugs or plug so if the carburetor don't start leaking we'll be good I should have shipped this up first. I know the pet cop works because it was full of bad gas. And uh, when I took the hose off the carburetor, it wasn't leaking. Well, I know it shuts off. Anyway. Turn the gas on. Yep, it's filling up the fuel filter. She's going to be loud and smoky. Oh, where's the gas top at? Turn the gas off right quick. Get the gas gas cap. What did I do with it? Gas cap somewhere. I think it's gonna run. I think it's got enough compression to run. I, I don't have a chain on it. I'm gonna put the chain back on. I gotta fix the brakes. So Focus on throttle works. Oh man, this thing is tall.
All right, she runs good, really good, nice and crisp. I found out on these Ken carburetors, the idle screw is, I mean the uh, choke, the choke knob is the idle screw, and uh, you have to turn it counterclockwise to get it to idle. A lot of people don't like their bikes to idle anyway because if they fall off of it, they want it to shut off. But if you turn that choke knob counterclockwise, that's how you get it to idle. So, runs good, like I say, sounds good. Now I just gotta get the chain on it and get some brakes. And uh, we'll see what's up with the clutch and the transmission. Uh, I did order a uh, new master cylinder rear master cylinder for it and I ordered a new used uh, front brake master cylinder this one it might bleed out I don't know but a guy had one on eBay really cheap the handle wasn't all broken so I ordered another one of those and I got a uh, new pads for the front and back so we get all that on there and get some brakes we'll be uh ready to rip and see how much oil is going to leak out of the case since it's cracked which they got so much silicone on there i don't see anything dripping but uh it had to be leaking some they might have put some jb well and silicone on it i don't know but it sounds real good. I think for what I paid for it, uh, it was a real good deal. So, I mean, I think I gave uh, five, five eighty, $580 or something like that for it. I mean, but these old bikes, I mean, they, they still sell. I mean, new bikes are so expensive. These old bikes do just the same. I mean, just different color, different graphics and stuff. But it's got some good tires. It's got the mesh meshler on the back. That's a good old hookup motocross tire there. I think it's got the stock on the front. Uh, what is that? SX K760. So it's probably just got the stock. Uh, look at that fan. It's probably just got the stock front tire, but the back tire. I mean, that's probably a what, three hundred dollar rear tire at least, maybe two hundred dollars. Pro circuit pipe. It does have a broken mount, which I'm gonna try and weld, weld that up, tack weld it. That's aluminum, ain't it? I think that's aluminum. It's aluminum that won't work I had to get it mig tigged up there but uh hey I mean so anyway I'm gonna quit yabbing I'm gonna get the chain on I'm trying to get some brakes on it now and it's nighttime so I'm not planning on riding it tonight uh, disturb the peace so we'll get some brakes on it try and take it to the field see how the clutch is gonna work and uh I think she's going to be a good rig. All right. So I got the rear brake caliper off. The piston was stuck. It would not move. And when I took the line off, all this rusty looking brown, watery brake fluid mess came out. So I tried to put some brake fluid in it and bleed it just to get the piston to start moving. That didn't work, so I just went ahead and took the caliper off and cleaned it out real good. And I'm going to go ahead and put the new master cylinder. Here's the new rear pads. These are the old ones, almost paper thin. And here is the new master cylinder with the reservoir. So I'm not going to take any chances. I'm going to go ahead and peel that one off of there, put the new one on, flush the brake line out that goes from the master cylinder down to the caliper, 
and uh, put the new pads and the caliper back on and hopefully we can bleed the brakes out and they have rear brakes and then we'll just move on to the front well actually with the front I don't know if that master cylinder is any good uh, it's empty so I don't know if it leaked out or what but at least we get some rear brakes uh, that'll be a starting point to make this thing stop so I'm gonna go ahead and get all that mess off get it flushed out get everything cleaned up and uh, put it back together alright so after three business days <laughs> it feel like it finally got some rear brakes on the back of this thing so the new master cylinder that I bought the rod is actually uh, too long and when you put it on the bike the brake pedals way up here so it was either to take the saws off and cut that rod and make it shorter or try and use the old one the original one which I don't think is going to be any good if you look at the brown rusty brake fluid that came out or I had this one that is off my DRZ 400 uh, I bought new caliper and stuff for it a long time ago and I kept the master cylinder and uh, the only difference is the brake line faces out instead of in if you got it I feel like picking that one was all greasy if you got it up on the bike the brake line will face inside the frame on the original but on the DRZs they face out and they have like a guard that goes over them to keep this from getting hit same boat pattern and everything but the rod was the same length as the original one and now we got a full pedal of brake so new pads flushed out the line uh, made sure the caliper piston was going to slide in and out so that's good so we'll turn our attention to the front which I know is going to need some pads I got them uh, I don't know if you can see there yeah they're almost gone too you can see down there kind of dark but I'm going to have to uh, Get the front caliper off, free up the piston if it's frozen, flush out the line. Like I said, I got another one of these coming that's original with a good handle. So it might not be nothing wrong with this one, but it's so foggy, I can't tell if there's any brake fluid in there or not. And it's, I mean, it ain't got nothing. So that'll be here hopefully by Wednesday. Today is Monday. Uh, we got a lot of rain that just came through so I don't know if it's going to be raining tomorrow I really want to get it out and ride it so if it clears up tomorrow I might throw it out there maybe ride it a little bit and I'll try and show you guys that it runs shifts and all that but if it's raining we'll just continue on with the front brake getting at least getting the caliper off getting it freed up if it's stuck get new piston I mean not piston get new brake pads and flush out the line and then when the master cylinder come in we can put it on there and fill it up with fluid but we'll just see how the weather plays out I really want to take it over my riding testing field but I'm pretty sure it's underwater uh, we've been having a lot of rain come through just about starting to dry up a little bit and now it's raining again so anyway i'm gonna call it a night tonight we did hear it run and we did get the brakes fixed so things are looking up for it so we'll uh try and get it out there and ride as soon as we can well here it is 1998 yz 250 uh runs pretty good it kind of sputters on top end. I probably just need to uh, do some more adjusting on the air screw. But uh, 
got plenty of power um, I didn't get the front brakes going on it because um, the master cylinder I ordered somehow got lost in shipping and it's the guy said if he sees it return back to him he'll send it to me so I want to go ahead and ride this thing really so we'll just wait on the master cylinder if I keep it long enough uh, the bike just might be up for sale I did put the front brake pads in it but like I said the master cylinder uh, no brain on so like I say back brakes work good clutch works good I haven't seen any oil leaking out of it where well, that case was cracked and then repaired with a silicone they might have some uh, JB well or magnet steel or something behind there I just didn't take it off to uh, check it it's not leaking it's full of oil so I ain't worried about it so I'm gonna try and get some rides in like I say we got daylight savings time so it starts to get dark around 4 35 o'clock so I'm trying to get some rides in with it and uh, if one of y'all interested in it leave me a message uh, down in the comment section and you know if you're in the Memphis area hey I, I'll sell it you know it's really not the bike for me I mean I I'm more of an old old schooler biker I kind of like anything from like mm, maybe 95 back uh, but like I say it, it is a cool bike so I'm gonna ride
this thing is fast. <laughs> Wicked fast. Oh gosh. I think it cleared out a little bit. Because uh, I really felt the power band that time. But the suspension is hard as a brick. <laughs> the suspension needs to be softened up or rebuilt. But it came up in the power van a couple times after it cleared out. And uh, the throttle is so responsive that uh, I thought I was going to lose it. <laughs> but yeah, this thing, uh, it runs pretty good. I say suspension needs to be gone over. I don't know if it just set up for a long time and the front forks are just stiff or they got it adjusted too stiff. Uh, I did try to turn these screws up here, but that didn't do anything. And I forgot to let off some adjustment on the rear shock. They might have it stiff because it might be uh, a little bit too bouncy. So but uh i mean it still needs some little it's a little tlc but it does run good shifts good i need to move the shifter down just a tad i believe whoever was riding it uh was probably wearing motocross boots so with motocross boots you adjust the shifter up because those boots are real thick but that heel right there if you ain't careful that little heel right there get you so we're going we're going uh I guess ride till it gets dark. <laughs>
All right, so the sun is setting today, and uh, I had fun. I had a lot of fun. Uh, this bike, it's got some poop. It's got some poop. It will run. I don't know if it's got a make of a bigger piston in it, or that's just how these 250s run. I know somebody's been in it because once I cleaned it off, I seen all the new gaskets. So I think somebody was probably playing around on the track with it because the way it's set up, it's got the extra wide pegs. Like I said, the shifter is moved up. And uh, I think somebody was playing with it. But I'm going to get out of here, folks. Sorry it took me so long to come up with a video for the second channel. I've been busy on the first channel. I've been trying to find stuff to put on the second channel. And like I say, uh, these old bikes are either too far away from me or they're just too expensive or they just too tore up and I picked this one out because uh, it wasn't all tore up and um, that was hope so here it is it runs if I do something else with it y'all know so y'all like share subscribe as usual um, go over to the first channel RPM Auto check it out and uh, just stay tuned on RPM Auto Moto you never know what might come up next. Like I say this old girl right here uh, might find it at home. If not, I hold on to it. Uh, we'll go riding again, and uh, that's it. So the sun's getting beginning to set real good. We got some deer running around. I seen one or two over there. And uh, when I first pulled up, I don't know if you seen it on camera. I don't know on my GoPro. Two of them went that way. So there's a lot of deer out here. So I hear something now. Maybe that's the bike. But anyway, I'm gonna get out of here, folks. Like, share, subscribe, leave those comments. Please leave comments. Please give it a thumbs up. Hit the like. YouTube loves it when you hit like. They especially love it when you leave comments. It helps out the Adam Rhythm and it helps out my channel. And YouTube will put it on out there. So that's it. Check me out on Instagram, LPM Auto uh four you can check out rpm auto moto was an rpm auto motor on facebook uh got a facebook channel instagram and of course youtube all right see y'all later